It's fantastic to be here. Um, being at TEDxUSC always marks a really special milestone for both me personally and TED, as it was here that we launched the TEDx program in 2009, and so this really marks the third year anniversary of TEDx. And while, while TEDx... And so while TEDx was launched as a little experiment here um, two years ago, it has really evolved into this amazing program, and we at TED are completely humbled by it on a daily basis. And um, the program was launched initially because people were constantly coming up to us and asking us if they could host an official TED conference in their city or their country. The TED team's a very small team, and that's a very hard concept to scale. But more importantly, we were watching something really unique where people were both watching the TED Talks in front of their computer screens in a very isolated way, but also more and more people were getting together in groups and watching TED Talks either within a school environment and a community environment. And so it was through this that the TEDx program evolved. And so there are statistics, and um, here are some of the statistics. We've had almost 1,500 events held, um, over 900 events are planned, and we've had 270 university events, and there are another 116 university events that are planned. But for me, the statistics only tell a very small part of the story. Here are some additional um, examples of its growth. As you can see, TEDxUSC up there at the top in 2009. And it's really phenomenal in what has been happening on university campuses. I think in Korea, where TEDx is mainly a university phenomenon, there were over 67 events in a year and a half, which averages more than um, one event, TEDx event per million people in Korea. So the statistics are um, very fabulous to analyze, but I always say that is the small part of the story. And for me, the real story is um, the, basically the amazing human connections that happen at these TEDx events and the projects that emerge, the memes, the themes, the um, ideologies on a global level that are coming out of the TEDx events, and the unique local voices. A lot of the TEDx talks that happen at these TEDx events are now being put back on the TEDx platform, and this is enable, enabling voices that would never normally have been exposed to be exposed. And then finally, what's intriguing is a sort of cross-cultural exchange of ideas. So for example, we'll have a TEDx event in Taipei that'll be live streaming to a TEDx event in China, or coming up next week, we, or at the end of this week, we have a TEDx event in Ramallah that is actually going to be live streaming to four different Arab countries. And so it's these sort of stories that I find really um, interesting. And so what I'd like to do with my final um, minute or two is just read some of these stories. Um, the first one is from Tedek Shekvati. And Tedek Shekvati took place in a small rural village in southern India. And at the time, the organizer, who was a woman, had to go through an incredible personal journey to enable for this event to happen because the elders of the community didn't want a woman running it. And they also felt very intimidated um, about a conference that was about ideas. And so this was an email I got after um, this TEDx licensee hosted her second event. And she says, the usual villains are still there, but their voices were much lower compared to last year. The most beautiful outcome was that our venue was at a low-cost school, which is around 80 years old. There are no toilets in the school, but because of the Tedek Shekvati, the school finally got toilets built by the community members. It is finally getting a coat of paint too, and the best part is that one of the local politicians who represents Fatapur has also attended the event and has now donated money, which will go towards building some new classrooms. And then a couple of quotes. Um, this comes from TEDx NYED, which is a series of events around education. And this quote from an attendee goes, these events are the best learning I have experienced in all of my life. The focus is on action and inspiration. I leave re-energized and ready to act immediately. And then TEDx Skopje. As a small and impoverished country, I think Macedonia needs more of TEDx. This event bolstered our conference and our belief in human potential. We need more shining eyes, as Ben Zander put it. And then finally, this quote was from an Ivy League school that will remain nameless. Just wanted to let you know that I took more from the talks today than I have from any of my classes, maybe ever, at, and then the name of the school. <laughs> and then, um, and then finally, um, recently I got an email from a TED speaker who I'm a huge fan of, and the story goes, I'm sitting at the end of the world, the nearest small town over 600 kilometers away, huge oil fields surrounded by massive dunes, nothing else. 
with the head of the world's largest oil company and his hotshot team, co-ed. And what has most impacted young Saudis in the past few weeks, not Japan or the turmoil next door, but TEDx Riyadh and TEDx Jeddah. It is what everyone is talking about. It's a lead topic on Twitter and Facebook. And the email went on. So this program that was launched here at USC two years ago is creating an amazing ecosystem of ideas across the planet, a network of unique voices, people, and really passions. And so I want to take this opportunity really to thank Z for having the faith when it was nothing but an idea and collaborating with us on this. And I wanted to also um, just thank all of you for your support. Thank you.